three, two, one. Hey, what they do, man? And we're back with another interview. <laughs> we're out here. And we got Valentino Card in the building. What's good? How you doing, my guy? We're on Cheese with Duno. We're out here. I know. Wait, we've been talking about me coming on the podcast for like since last year. Since like yeah. for like months. Like but you've been crazy busy. I know. And, and then, yeah, we just kept missing each other. Yeah, finally, yeah, yeah. When you had time, yeah. I didn't have time. When when I had time, you were just everywhere. Touring, yeah. Touring. And it doesn't stop. Sometimes people be like, like, oh, so how long does your tour go? Like, when does it stop? I'm like, never. Like, it's just, yeah. I do take time off sometimes, but like, yeah. It's, it's rare? Yeah, it's oh, not rare. Because you do like monthly things, right? I mean, I'm gone like every weekend, and then like especially when I go to like Europe or Asia or internationally, I'm just I'm gone for like sometimes two weeks at a time, month at a time, depends. No, but what I'm saying is like sometimes you take breaks from between like let's say you'll work all of March, yeah, and then you'll take like yeah. an April off, but then you'll work a whole exactly. the next six months. Yeah, I'll, I'll 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 try to block out time for just making and producing music, just because like I'm not the best at making music on the road. I'm like I'm like okay at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, well, that's not true. I've seen you make music in a Tesla with Dylan that's Francis. That's true. That's true. Uh, we we we, uh, we made a beat in a Tesla. Yeah. That went crazy because you made that beat and then you had a show that night and you still performed. Yeah, that was that was that was super sick. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, and then we got the song "Move It Out" with Dylan Francis now. Wow. So yeah, go straight move it out. Yeah. But <laughs> do you feel like you're a mystery? How so? Like I feel like. So when I first got into like, the, like just going to raves and stuff, which was only like last year or maybe two years ago, mm -hmm. my homies were like, "We gotta go see this DJ," and I'm like, "Okay, yeah." It was and you think it's like, um, like all the music's the same, right? Like I I never expected the hip hop trans the transitions or like the reggaeton trans. I've ne I never even it was a whole new world to me, right? So I'm where. Beyond, I, I think it's beyond 2022. Yeah. And I go over there, and and um, I go over there, and I'm like, oh, we gotta go see Valentino Khan. And I was like, all right, cool. And I'm like, and I'm just confused, and I don't know where you play like Daddy Yankee. Yeah. And there was just so many bad bitches just twerking, and I was like, <laughs> oh, there's a vibe. Cause you think of a rave, right? As somebody that's not like, yeah, I shuffled like as a kid, but you think it's just like, and then it's just people like, there's not really no dance unless you're shuffling. But then I get there, and people are like twerking, and then you played Snoop, and then you were, it was just all these crazy transitions. And I was like, I was like, there's DJs like this. They're like, yeah, there's multiple DJs like this. Yeah. And then obviously I found out about other DJs like the Oro, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, Valentino Khan's a mystery, though. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I kind of always play sets that are all over the place uh, in a lot of instances just because, like, I mean, like, I came up uh, making, like, Mumbaton, which you know probably now, but it's it, for those who don't know, it's like an electronic... It's basically like you take reggaeton beats and you put electronic sounds over them. Yeah. Uh, it originated from this dude, Dave Nada, who like was from D.C. And his little cousin had like a skip school day and wanted to bring all his friends out and, and like party because he skipped school. And then he, yeah. he, hit, he hit his cousin, Dave Nada. And, and basically he took like Dutch house records, which is like Afrojack and, and all that. And yeah. he slowed it down and like Chucky and all them. And he slowed it down. Sidney Sampson slowed it down to like... It was usually set like 128 BPM, and he slowed down to like 108, and then like that's how Mumbaton came to be, you know. It, and then you added it to the reggaeton music. Yeah, and then ba so basically, like when I was first starting out, I was just like my friends were just like, "Yo, try this, try and make this," and then I was like, "Cool," and then uh, uh, I just messed around and made it. So like that was like that was like the original. Like if you've been following me from day one, you'll know me as like Mumbaton guy. And then wow. Like, and then like yeah. And then it, I always made every style of music. I mean, I, I started out as a rap producer, so like, yeah. and then I just stumbled into dance music. So no, and, and that's and, why it's all over the place. Sometimes. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's. And when you're like you're like me when I'm interviewing, I ask you about your dog, and then <laughs> talk about your life. You know it's what I'm saying? Like yeah, like yeah. I just. And then I when I seen that, I was I was just like, okay, one, I don't do drugs, so I'm probably yeah, I'm drunk, but I'm probably the most sober there. Yeah. So I'm really, but and, and all all my friends have seen you before. I'm new. This is a whole new thing to me. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and you played some Snoop, and I was like, "Hold on, <laughs> dog, what the fuck?" And then you went from Snoop to some Bad Bunny. I was like, "Oh, it's a movie <laughs> right now." And Beyond's during summer. Beyond September. No, it's like uh, March, I think. 
I always get confused with the names uh, of the festivals. I just beyond his March, beyond his March, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Beyond his March, because so, because yeah. it's my month birthday. Yeah, yeah, but it's but it's good weather. It's going up, and I was just like, and I remember just becoming a fan right off the bat. Like I was like, oh, because right when right when I I got the late right when I walked in, you were the first DJ we want to go see. Oh, that's great. So I was like, is everything else like this? They're like, not everything's like this. Yeah, they're like, there's different type of DJ. There's like techno, and they were just giving me the breakdown. But I was like. I was like, and then I'm, I'm, I'm blessed with my career and my platform, so I'm able to have reach out to different people that like yeah. not anybody just can. So I remember I hit you and I was like, "Hey, bro, I seen your shit," and it was yeah. just like, and I was like, "I seen your shit." Too. Yeah, 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 you I did. Seen you on, like, I definitely, I think Fool's Gone Wild the post you a couple times for though. sure. And then I seen, I, yeah, you come across my feed. It was the the video was like, oh. The domestic oh, violence the one? Girl, domestic violence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember like I was just cracking up at that video. You've always been like a funny dude. So like yeah, yeah like I, I didn't know you yet, but I knew of you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And 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 to me it was just such a fucking new world. Yeah. And I was like, bro, I gotta I gotta like just become like friends with this guy. Just off the bat, I was just a fan of the music. Yeah. Like and then just and then I was like, I'm just like I'm I wanna know I wanna know the questions. Like, what's your ethnicity, Valentino? I'm like a, a a random form of like Middle Eastern. But like, oh, you, you I, don't know? I, 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 it would take the whole thing to like describe to you basically the yeah. whole podcast. But like, I think a lot of people assume I'm Latino. Maybe I think that's why. You're that's what talking. I thought you were too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. He's Middle yeah. Eastern. Yeah. You definitely give me Latino vibes. I mean, I, like I would not have a career if it wasn't for Latinos in Southern California. Period. Because like I said, like I came up making like. Basically, electronic reggaeton. Yeah, song. yeah. And like everybody that come out to the parties, and still to this day, like playing wherever I play, like everybody yeah. comes out, just shows me the most love. And uh, I, 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 I like, I just I you embrace very, it. I, feel, I embrace it. And I feel embraced. You know. No, yeah, no, one hundred percent. I think. I mean, obviously, I'm a Latino, but I would speak for every other Latino homie I have, which is the majority, and they'll be like, "Bro, yeah. Valentino Khan, we claim him." <laughs> and I'm like, you, do you know his razor? Like, no, but we claim it. I was like, well, okay, what if he doesn't want to be claimed? <laughs> You're welcome, Manatino. <laughs> it's solidified. There we go. Yes, sir. Where were you born and raised? L.A. Uh, I grew up in Van Nuys. Fire. Yeah. Valley kid. Yeah, Valley kid. No wonder you're a big Lakers fan. I know. Well, I'm diehard Lakers till I, I die, bro. Like, that's like... It's like family Lakers, then friends. <laughs> <laughs> like, like literally. No. <laughs> like, like no, no, I can't. I don't. Like, I can't hang out. Like, there is a playoff game. Yeah, literally. Like, yeah. That's. Have you ever missed a set for the Lakers game? No, but there may have been once or twice uh, where I had the end of the game on at the booth when I was playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a tour manager pull it up on the on the uh, on, on his phone, and I'm like watching. Yeah. That's sick. Um, yeah. And how'd you get into just producing and DJing in general and in and, 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 and Van Nuys? Yeah, I, I just, just through computer software, I, I think like it was kind of weird full circle. I had like a friend in, uh, in like junior high who was sort of getting into DJing and I dabbled with it for a bit. This was back when it was all on vinyl. So I, like I had like random shit. Like I had like DJ Rectangle, which is like super like scratch DJ. And then I had like... Um, also, I had, like, like random vinyls of, like, s singles at the time, which was, like, shit, I don't know. It was, like, uh, like, like ludicrous and mystical and shit like that. And then I would, like, you know, I would mix those records. I would scratch them a little bit, like, barely. But then uh, I, like, sort of dabbled in that, and then I was, like, cool. It, I wasn't, like, crazy passionate about it yet until I started to make my – well, then I started to make my own music. I started just making rap beats. I didn't know how to play a piano yet, so – Basically, I would look up like, uh, okay, I, I had a sample, so I would look up like, okay, who did uh, who did like Dre sample? Who did uh, Wu Tang Clan sample? Oh, like you get like like I don't know Gladys Knight or whoever like, and then I I would like dig for all these old records, but I had the advantage of the internet, so like I would go on the yeah, yeah. allegedly I would go on the file sharing uh, <laughs> websites, and then I would I would, I would download. Um, uh, yeah, all these records, and it gave me like a, an appreciation for like all this old music. Like I, I just learned so much about different eras of music from like different artists and, and all that. And then uh, shit, then I, I kept making rap beats. Uh, I ended up producing for like Ti and Two Chains early on. And then at the same time, my, my brother started listening to um, to dance music in his room. And at the time, I'm like, cool. I'm just listening to like the game and like Dre and. 
50 Cent, and I'm like, cool, that's cool, but like, you do you. Then one day I pass by his room, and he's listening to uh, a record, uh, Waters of Nazareth by Justice. And I was like, it was the most distorted, like, but like, like, ear catching shit to me. And I was like, okay, wait, what is that one? Like, what, yeah. what is that? And that's always been like my, my favorite reaction to music in general is like when you're able to, like, even like with old Dre records, Timbaland records, Neptune's records, be like, hey, wait, what the fuck is that? Like, as a producer. Yeah, yeah, you like catch it. Like, yeah. yeah. And like, like certain Missy Elliott records, like, I remember like listening to it for the first time, hearing it on Power 106 here, and then being like, what is that? And then you're like, you didn't have a phone to record it on. You just have to like wait and see if the dude said it after the break. And then if he did, if, 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 the, if the, the, the disc jockey didn't say it, you'd be like, what, what, what is that? Like, and then you got to, like, wait until, until you hear it again. So um, anyway, so, yeah, I passed my, bro- my brother's room one day. He's playing this record. I said, all right, cool, fine. Give me that one. And that was my gateway. And then I, I started listening to, like, other artists, like Boys Noise, Bloody Beat Roots at the time, everybody from, like, Ed Banger, who was, like, the crew Justice was rolling with, like, all these dudes from, from, from France. And, like, it really influenced my sound, even to this day. Um, and then... The next step was like, oh, okay, so like if you want to like have a career at this, like especially at the time, it's like you don't really make much or any money really off the records themselves. Mm-hmm. So you got to learn you got to learn how to DJ. I'm like, all right, I kind of had a leg up with that. And then I sort of taught myself a little bit how to DJ. And then long story short, put my music on the internet, grew a fan base as I was talking to yeah, like, yeah. about, about uh, talking about you know a second ago. And then uh, thank God I'm still doing it. <laughs> That's amazing, bro. Yeah. And and this is all within what what's your age like? Like did, did I mean, like this is probably within a span of like. I mean, if you go back to me making music, I started making music when I was thirteen, and then like just through several years, like then dance music came around, and like yeah, and then it all just kicked off it all just because clicked. because I was wondering, like I always wondered, like you DJs, right? Like I, I seen your interview, well, not an interview, but you were sitting out talking to Diplo, and he used to work at Subway. Yeah. Before he was, was it called before? Like he was Diplo, but he was DJing and he wasn't making money, so he would yeah. work at Subway too. Yeah. And I'm like, did you ever have a regular job? I honestly put all my eggs in one basket from like the beginning, and I was just like, wow. I also, I also was coming up like during the recession, so I did apply for jobs. I just couldn't get a single <laughs> job. So like, I was, I was trying. At the same Damn, time, I was just like, that's well, sick. This was my way, like my route. That I was like, this is a path towards like, like making a living. For my Fire! Family, so. Can you remember your first show or event ever? Maybe it was like a hundred people, fifty people, twenty people. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, the the I came up playing at this bar uh, uh, called the Central, which was in Santa Monica, and like, if you were around during that time, it was a lot of people came up playing there, like before they like had a name really even, like Dylan Francis, uh, I think Crookers played there, uh, uh, Skrillex played there before, um, et cetera, et cetera, played there. That was like, it was my, that's my first friend since like the beginning, since day one. Et cetera, et cetera? Literally, like, like I still, I literally saw him two days ago, like we hung out, like he is like, he's just been the realest dude and he's my day one homie, like since like, like literally, like I played like my first or second show, and then like some dude was like, "Hey, meet this dude," and then like we just we just like kicked it off ever since. Yeah, like and it, it, it never like half the time we're not even talking about some music shit. We're just like just like kind of roasting people or like, "Hey, like what's that what's that dude doing?" Like, oh yeah, just know? talking shit, yeah. just being homies. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, how do you guys choose? Or, or, or actually, what was your reaction to your first rave invite? Your first big event or big show invite like you got the email or they reached out or we're like oh, here for me to play. yeah for you yeah. to play um i think the the first real big one was was hard summer uh back then uh gary richards destructo was running it and uh yeah i, I played like an earlier slot on like a i think it might have been like an Ausla stage at the time or maybe not i don't know it was an earlier it was like an early slot like a daytime slot but like people like fairly full tent uh, for me, and then uh, I just remember like I don't know the first time like early on that when you do it, you're just on like adrenaline mode type of times like a thousand because yeah. you're just like you, you never experienced that and like uh, I'm, I'm never one I've never gotten like nervous before sets or anything like never that. never like only time I ever get like a little bit like anxious but it's more like edgy than like real nervous is like hometown LA shows 
not because of the show, really. More because, like, I'm trying to make sure the fucking guest list is all right. Yeah. <laughs> but the last show I did, everything was, shout out to my whole team. Everything was very They killed smooth. it. Shout out to you. The Palladium was yeah. amazing, by the way. And then, and then what's it called? we'll talk about that. But yeah, yeah. I think, I think, um, I've always wondered, like, how does, like, what if you press the wrong button one day? You know what <laughs> listen, I'm saying? Listen, like, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. It, it, I know there's, like, so if you've seen a CG, CDJ before, it's, like, there's two main buttons. There's the Q button, which, like, cues up a point and it also stops the music. Yeah. And there's the play and pause button, which plays and pauses. The, yeah. Sometimes, as simple as it is, sometimes I have fucked up and I press the wrong button. <laughs> but this is, what you, this is what you have to do. You have to treat it like a rewind. Even though I didn't really rewind it, you're like, no, 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 I hope you gotta get on the mic. And be like, nah, y'all motherfuckers weren't ready for that shit. And you have to, you have to play it. You, you can't like be like, sorry guys, I messed up. That kills the vibe, right? You gotta be like, nah, I need y'all to go harder this time. Like, like, it's like, you have to treat it like a rewind. Like, yeah, no, I, I feel it. And, and I've seen you DJ multiple times. So I'm wondering which one of them were fake rewinds. How, how many times have I fucked up when you see me playing? No, no, I don't know if you <laughs> fucked up because you say you nah, treated it like a rewind. I mean, I, I only fucked up probably like. Well, okay, okay. Worst fuck up of all time. Uh, worst fuck up of all time wasn't really my fault. I was playing in this technology, and that's when that's when I was like, yeah, I need to switch to USB sticks. I used to play on a controller, like you know, like a DJ controller, like a like a Tractor S two, um, and I would play off my laptop because I was just more comfortable that way. Um, but then I realized there's just the more like wires and connections you have, the more like room for error there is. So I'm just like, I remember I was playing in Pittsburgh. I was opening up for the Bloody Beat Roots. This is like 2013 or some shit, and I, don't, I forget what exactly what happened. Like the thing just stopped working, and then I'm like kind of troubleshooting in the middle of the set, and it's not, especially when like also it's like it's not even my show. Like I'm opening for these guys. Like I'm trying to like build a name, so like people really don't have as much patience. Yeah. Like they were pretty cool about it. I, like that crowd, I remember, but like they just don't have as much patience to like wait around for you to <laughs> fix that shit. And, and like half the time, I like. It's like I don't even know how to fix it. I got it to work again, but yeah, that's it's very like yeah, I don't know. It feels like somebody just has like a, a gun to the back of your head, yeah. but like you got to like fix this immediately. What's the car? What about back to backs? Yeah. Because I feel I've always wondered. I've seen obviously I saw you and Del Oro back to back. Mm -hmm. Shout out you guys. You, you let me pull up on you. I appreciate that very much. That was amazing, by the way. You guys you, yeah. killed that set. Um, at Escape. Yeah. But what about back? Because I've seen back to backs, back to backs, back to backs. And I'm like, there's three DJs right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've seen the the two, and then I've seen, obviously, the solos and stuff like that. But when you're doing back-to-backs, what's, like, like, how do you know when it's your turn? I know you guys prep. Yeah. Like, you know, obviously, you're, like, it, you want to know what songs you're going to play at yeah. certain points. But, like, what's the main thing that you feel like is important and stuff like that? I mean, it, it really depends on who you're playing with, too. Like, um, uh, like my play with, like, 4B is very... Um, like he's a really good, great DJ. Like, um, and and we just we honestly would be like, all right, we're gonna start with this one song, and then the rest of the set we just totally freestyle. Yeah, yeah. And then um, with Dioro, we we actually like worked a lot on like the like the edits and stuff, and like and like um, and like really really planning it out. We really wanted to make that one like extra special. It was the first time we played back to back, and like we're both Southern California people, so uh, we knew we had to to make that a big one. Um, but it really is, yeah, it really is like. Just the timing of the records and like the just knowing if you're familiar with the music and like for me I can't speak for anybody else I have a pretty like photographic memory of like a song of like all right this this drop is like 16 bars or 24 bars this build up is 16 bars of music whatever so I know when to mix in and mix out so I think as long as you're like familiar with the music and you know the the you know the general vibe and flow of the set you know what I mean like okay now we're gonna get into some house shit kind of cruise through that. Then like naturally like ramp up into some more Pick hype it up, shit. Yeah. Then we're gonna bring it out with like some ratchet like you know 100 BPM shit. You know what I mean? So it's like as long as you know like the general flow of the set and you're kind of like uh, just both dialed in a little bit with that. Like it, it it works out. I think usually. Damn, that's crazy. Cause I've always thought about like right. Like cause I'm sitting there watching and I'm yeah, like it helps when you're a quick mixer though too. So it definitely because like sometimes you'll forget like you know when you want to come in and when not and you gotta like. You know, yeah, well, no, I've seen you guys, and you guys did a lot of mixture of songs. A huge Latino yeah. records, huge yeah. growing up, cleaning the house records, to reggaeton, to hip-hop, all these mixture of things, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, 
What if Latino accidentally plays like a song that doesn't go with this song or vice versa? Just this just me asking questions right in the top of my head. Yeah. I'm also very young. I'm like, uh, so yeah. I'm having a good time. But after I'm like, I wonder how that works between DJs. Like, do you get an X amount of time for like, let's say you have an hour. Does he get five? You get five. He gets five. You get five. You get five you get... Oh, oh, like uh, I mean, it depends. Like usually you just go like one on one. Like we'll just switch off yeah, the yeah. record. Um, sometimes I've been in back to backs where we're just like. I'll do two, then you do two. But I, I like just switching off one-on-one because otherwise it's just like, I don't know. I, I'd rather have like just thinking of like one, the next singular record at a time. 100%. Of like two records. That's fire. That's yeah. amazing. There's also a thing that you do that that when I, after I went home after that first beyond I saw you, um, was this Hulk drink that everybody wanted me to, because oh, okay, like yeah. we saw you and everybody's like, we got to do the Hulk drink. And I'm like, what the fuck is a Hulk drink? Yeah, so, it's, it, it, so me and 4B uh, would have like a like a side act, like a DJ set, back-to-back -back thing we would do. And uh, so 4B, he's from the East Coast. His shit is Hennessy. And me, uh, I'm from the West Coast, so it's like totally different like opposites. But like I would drink, especially around when like you were like first drinking, you were like underage, you were like, I would drink uh, uh, Hypnotic. <sighs> Which is like, uh, if you don't know, it's a little bit dated. Like, <laughs> like, but it's like, it's dope because it was like, it's shit. Like, you imagine like, like Nelly or Chingy would drink, or like, like, like Ludacris. Would Hypnotic is crazy, it, it, but it's like, it's like mad sweet. But this is what happens: is you know your color palette, right? You take the brown, you take the Hennessy, you mix it with the blue of, uh, of the Hypnotic. Hypnotic. What color does that make? Green. Exactly. And that's, that's a, the, it's called an Incredible Hulk. It's a real drink. It's a real drink. And uh, yeah, if you're not careful, it'll uh, it get turned up off that. And I was looking at your guys' video when you guys were doing it, and I was like, they're chugging this drink like it's nothing. Yeah. And then obviously, I'm thinking you guys did something with the, with the bottle, and then my hungry ass older was like, it's an Incredible Hulk for us, a real drink. It's a real drink. Yeah, it's, but, a, it's a known drink. But I feel yeah. like you guys popularized it, especially on that set where it was probably one of the best sets and, and then like that people from what I've heard was like that people saw and then it was like, bro, and they made this crazy drink where they just went super nuts. There's a, there's a, um, well, actually, I don't know if there was an actual Incredible Hulk in that video, but there's a set we did. It was like me, 4B, and Good Times Ahead, formerly known as GTA. Yeah, G GTA, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and like, it's from Orlando and we're just, we're having a good time there that set. <laughs> like, but yeah, we're just, uh, I don't know. I'm sure like you drink anything, you build up a tolerance to it. Facts, because the way you were drinking it, and and honestly, for I like the way you drink. What's that? I I I I love the way you drink. Okay. You like always <laughs> you, do like you, this you little. Observe me drinking. Yes. Okay. Because yeah. I because <laughs> before you got here, I was like I do my homework for my guests. Okay. Okay. So I'm, so I'm, I'm like good. watching all your sets, yeah. and I'm like the way this food drinks is quick. You drink and pump at the same time. That's like a thing for you. Oh, oh, like 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 I'm um, like you're dancing. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm like, dude, this food's the best. Air humper of all time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I definitely will, like, fucking thrust when I play, 100%. <laughs> and, like, this, this is the thing, like, even aside from that, like, all jokes aside, too, if, like, I'm moving around when I, and I'm having fun up there, like, they out there are going to be having fun, too. Like, 100%. I, I, I can't, like, and it's no, I guess to each their own, I can't understand DJs that are just, like, up there and just, like, like, I don't know, just bob your head a little bit to it, like, like you know what I mean? Like, like, we're really blessed to be able to do music for a living and, you know, play it in front of a crowd. Like, have a little bit of fun. With no, people. and... Like, act like you're having fun. At least. And, 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 you and, I, and I feel like if you could, you would jump off stage, but obviously you can't jump into 70,000 people no. at EDC. I thought about it. I have to, like, like climb a ladder like fucking Jeff Hardy or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, because I see you. No, crowd, he'll yeah. put a song, he'll get... And they have this much space, right? It's like it's the amount of the size of the CDJs or whatever, and I'll see him run back and forth, and I'm like, I know that Latino conscious wants to jump off stage and just somehow could DJ from anywhere. I've stage dive a couple times, three times I think. First time though, I stage dive, uh, I got a fucking black eye from that. So you you didn't learn. Well, here's the thing, I knew I knew I'll, I'll tell you this was the first. Actually, I was just thinking about this show the other day. It was at the Yost Theater, which in Orange County. Orange right? County, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Which I don't even know if they do. Maybe they just started again, or I don't know if they do shows at the Yost anymore. But like, that was like the shit to play there back in the day uh, in the OC. And uh, it, it was the first time, like deep down low, my record deep down low had just come out. Like, uh, so it was the first time I really had like like real like like significant buzz. Like a buzz, me. like a buzz. Yeah, and then so the, the show ended up selling out. The crowd was crazy. That crowd like always would go hard over there, and. Um, <clears throat> 
I remember the promoter over there was like, yo, like we sold out, like this is great. Like you wanted like stage dive and like, he's like, have you ever? And I'm like, nah, I haven't. And I was like, cool, I'm gonna do it. And then, uh, so I knew like in my head, like I kind of like visualized it, I'm like mapped it out. So what should you, you, you want to do when you stage dive two things is not that I'm like a professional at it, but this is like the basic manual to it is like, first of all, don't like dive like, like face first in the crowd. Cause somebody will like poke you in the eye or some shit like that. And the second, you want to like spread eagle and d like open your body like like this because your weight will be dispersed over like more people. So otherwise, <laughs> if you're just like this, like it's on one dude to catch you and you're just, just gonna get crushed. You know what I mean? Dog and 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 for that one, you got a black guy. Yeah. So this is what happened. So I, I knew the form to take. So I said instead of doing the wrong things, I'm going to jump in the air. I'm gonna I'm gonna like spread eagle and then turn my back and then people will catch me. So I'm like okay. I think I did it right. So, I, so it's like, okay, so I'm like waiting for the drop to jump, and then I, I jump in the air. I see, um, I, I'm like turning, and then I sort of see this guy's elbow uh, c come up, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, what? And then the rest of my set, like my eye, I just, I feel it swell up, and I just, I just play with like a shut eye for the rest of my set, basically. <laughs> so I thought that, that guy's elbow hit me, right? We watched the game tape. We watched somebody had iPhone footage of it. Little did I know, some photographer at the time who, who, who I, I knew um, also decided he wanted to stage dive not after me, but at the same moment. Oh, my God. And we God. see him, like, literally, like, three steps behind me. I, I dive, and then he dives, and he does the same thing, except he goes, whack, and he oh. whacks me right in my eye. So he tried to do, like, a like land with yeah. two, but then when he was spreading, yeah. you were already spread out, so you couldn't even cover your no. face, and it smacked you. I, I was I was worried about the crowd. Friendly eating. fire, Pops. I didn't know somebody else was going to jump at the same time. So technically, I did it right, but somebody else just jumped on top of me. <laughs> Damn, and then, and then yeah. the other two times were good. The other two times were good. Other time I did it at the Belasco, which was great. Uh, wow! And, and that was that was that was cool. And then I did a I did a crazy one. Actually, this this time the other this other time I, I did it with Carnage in uh, or who now goes by Gordo. Gordo. Uh, same same man. Uh, but we were in Columbus, Ohio, uh, I think. And then I, I jumped. Uh, I had we went to like they had some like army like surplus store or something. I bought like some like crazy like like foreign police outfit or something like that. I, was, I had some crazy outfit on. And then I jumped in and uh, and they carried me all the way to the back of the venue and didn't drop me and, and they brought me all the way back. And that was, that was really cool. Yeah, I've heard a lot of wild stories. I have a lot of rapper friends. Yeah, yeah. And I've heard like their nuts get grabbed <laughs> or like their hair gets pulled yeah. or like their butt gets grabbed, like very aggressive. Mm -hmm. They're like, they're like, and they're like, sometimes they don't mean it, but people, if, if you're in a soul, especially yeah. if you're in a sold out show, people are just like trying to just Get off me. Like, and then it's, you're a pretty small guy. But imagine. I'm a normal. Yeah, you're normal like, size. Like 5'4". No, you're not 5'4". Like like <laughs> but you're pretty light on weight. Have you seen Rod Wave? He sometimes oh, stage. Yeah, yeah. You're not fat. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. That is like, my boy loved that. Yeah, I don't know what the perspective is like yeah. with the camera. I just want to like set the record straight. Yeah, I'm like a, yeah. yeah. A love the order of death. That's my guy. I'm having him, him on next week. Who's that? Deodor. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, I'm having He's him on next week. But if the order were to stay, like if I'm a fan, right, which I am, and I'm standing on the crowd and I have a choice between you and Dodo. How much gonna choose you. But also, you, was it, was it, was it called? you met Ojeezy. He's like six something. Yeah. He's a real big Latino. He was, so, he was a lot taller than I expected him to be. Actually. That's what everybody says. Yeah. And if Ojeezy were to jump, I'm like, oh, you're um, pretty does big. He have a bunch of like, like, like six foot six friends or some shit like that. Cause it, no, he's the only one yeah. his size. That's why I feel like I'm that's why. Like, he, cause, yeah, I just didn't expect him to be as tall. Yeah, he's as really tall. No, no. The, the, homie, the homies that be with him, like the homie Drake, Steve, they're like five, five. <laughs> five, five feet. Okay. Oh, Jeezy just just he, and then yeah. he wears big ass boots. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Jeezy, you're not helping the Latino stigma. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm like, you know what I mean? But they've told me stories and just any other rapper homies. They're like, sometimes like they don't do it on purpose. They're like, but you get violated in there. Yeah. It's on like, accident. Intentionally or unintentionally, they will cop a feel. Yeah, we'll cop a yeah, feel. I know. Um, was it? Oh, you mentioned Carnage. How do you like that rebranding? I think it's it's great. It's inspiring, honestly, because. I, and I've, I've known... And Carnage is Gordo now. Carnage for those that Gordo don't know. Now, yeah, no, I've, I've known Diamante like, for like a long-ass time. Um, and uh, it was it's really cool to like see him climb and climb and climb as Carnage. And then like I think he, he just wanted to do something that he was actually like passionate about and like felt like was more organic to where he was in his life probably. And uh, 
Yeah, I know. Like that's the thing, especially about that that tour. It was me. It was it, 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 would open, then I would play, then Carnage would close. It was Carnage's tour, yeah. and it was like if you think about like those three acts, like especially back then, it was like the most aggressive, like like lineup of music they could put that he could put together. So yeah. I, I always have a lot of respect for him because a lot of um, a lot of headliners are like scared to like put somebody on before them that's gonna be aggressive, but he was just like, nah, I wanted to like just go hard the whole night, clearly, <laughs> and um, yeah, um, so like. I, I like navigated that road with him, and, and, and he always uh, uh, he always was 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 cool. It showed me respect, and we're friends. And uh, then, yeah, then I think uh, he just wanted to, to to do something that was like very much in line with where he was at. And I think that that's what I was gonna say was like his um, his transition from doing like the most aggressive music. Like he played like crazy hard style and shit in his sets and festival trap and all that, and then to transition into like the house world that he tra- transitioned into. It definitely like takes a lot for people to wrap their heads around it. I think. Yeah. But uh, he's just knocking doors down, and good for him. I'm happy for him. So when I saw him, I was like at odd. Like, cause I was like, how many were like that's DJ Carnage, and I'm yeah. like, no, it's not. I, I know about DJ Carnage. Yeah. DJ Carnage came. A, a lot of his success was from the hip hop scene. Yeah. So you he hear was, about that? Was, I was just thinking about the records that he was doing back then, cause he was like at the forefront of like the trap movement, like him and Flosserdamus and, and everybody yeah. else that came out that movement. But um, he was the only guy that would like, like that Migos Bricks record that he did, uh, like he was the only guy, like he never forced like rap vocals into the like trap beats, yeah. like the electronic trap beats. Yeah. Cause like it, a lot of times it just didn't work. Like it would, it would like almost work and then like it didn't work. Yeah. But like that, that Migos Bricks record is like, you can still play that today and like it just it like it bangs without having a real like drop to it like it like that chorus, it's so like, natural yeah the it, hand clap like on the chorus like builds up and then like it bangs like so hard when it drops and it's just like he really understood how to do it right um uh with those records yeah, yeah. and 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 like i said just seeing him and i was kind of like like i was just so like i'm like i was i'm like because i'm like i said i'm so new to everything so I'm just like at odd by all this shit, right? And then I follow him, and then I'm just watching. Like he's like somewhere in a basketball court in Brazil, DJing for like a thousand people. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I'm like, just like, what the fuck is going on? And then then here you say like his transition is like, especially you guys as DJs, you guys we don't we would never understand what you guys do go through for a career and a different step and being and having to change your whole identity around. Yeah. And for you, for you, I feel like for you to be able to embrace like a, a a colleague or somebody that you've been part of their career, have been part of yours, is amazing to see and just hear. Yeah, no, totally. It, it's it's great to see that. I mean, like, I've had to do that myself like a few times. Like, it's not been like such a hard pivot into like a completely different world, but it's yeah. been like, like I don't know. When I was like I said, when I was first coming out, like people were, like you're a Mumbleton guy, and I'm like, yeah. Cause I've only really put out Mobaton records, but I can do a lot more. And then I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I still love Mobaton. I play Mobaton on my sets. So. Yeah. But then it's like, okay. Then I started making trap records, and it's like, oh, so he's a trap guy. I'm like, no. Then I started making house records, which is like more become my bread and butter, yeah. I guess. But then like, I, I, I like like I, you just constantly have to like serve people different looks and it evolve. That's what it is. It's like you know, you look at great artists like really reinvent themselves. I mean, if you want to look at someone like in the, that same space that I'm in, is like you look at Diplo. Yeah. He's, he's got like. It's like every few months he's got a new phase, which is cool. It's exciting, you know. I mean, so it's like he got like he had like twerk era Diplo, uh, where he was making just the most ratchet music. Then he then he kind of had like trap Diplo. Then he'd like um, the house Diplo, uh, and then he also has the Thomas Wesley, like the country project. So he's he's always. It's, I, I was talking with him the other day about it. It's, he's always evolved and found ways to like reinvent himself yeah. and serve people different looks and it keeps things interesting I think you know have you ever thought about fully changing your name like and totally rebranding kind of like just like new like you just delete everything off your IG you know what and the, you won't be Valentino Connor more you'll be something else the only thought I would have about that is like you know like when you're first starting out you naturally when you jump into the water you like you're learning how to swim you know what I mean you're just learning so many things and I'll be like damn if I started a new project um like knowing everything I know now, like 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 the right way to go about it, like from day one, like I wonder how successful it could be. But 
now that I say that, like, don't assume, like, every masked DJ you see is me. Like, it's not. <laughs> people, people, like, it's crazy. Like, people, like, uh, I'm not, like, people, like, oh, is, is Marshmallow Skrillex? Like, the whole time. Like, is Marshmallow Skrillex? I'm, like, that's not, like, logistically fucking possible, man. <laughs> like, he, like, <laughs> like, they're literally, like, one guy is in, like, London and, like, another guy is in, like, Miami. It's, like, it's, like, touring. Like, it's, it's, like, it's not possible. But, like, How do you feel about everybody wanting to come into your scene? Because I uh, shout out Let the Invict. They just interviewed um Ty Dolla Sign. Yeah. And he's going by the minister. And he wants to start. He's learning. He said he's done a little bit, a couple sets, oh, masked cool. up. And but sometimes he gets too litty and takes off the mask and people find out who he <laughs> is. But he talked about getting into this world. And then I've heard other like the shacks of the world. Yeah. The shacks and, and now I'm seeing him and Gordo, obviously, he was part of the scene, but obviously now he's, you know, it's carnage. Now he's on to Gordo and just, and, and even me dabbling with it, it was just, just so fucking fun. But yeah. do you feel like it's genuine? Yeah. I mean, if you have the, if you have genuine intentions about it, like I've known Ty, like I don't know Ty well, but like I've known him on like a high hello basis. Yeah. Like um, uh, he was going to at, like hard summer, like since like, it's almost like I was playing it, like maybe a couple years after, I think. Like I started seeing him. Yeah. He would come around. Uh, I think Mustard would come out there and shit too. Um, I think he probably, probably played a couple sets. Um, and uh, yeah, so he I, I, that's news to me. If he, uh, actually, I actually want to ask him about that now. Not next time I talk to him, like, like that's uh, that's really cool. Like, like if you have genuine intentions about it, like that's one of the reasons why, like, I really fuck with Shaq doing what he he's doing. And he's put me on and um, he came out for my first Palladium show. Uh, man, the first time I talked to Shaq, um, he he had just started DJing, right? And I seen like, oh, I seen the clips, like, oh, okay, cool. Shaq went to like uh, Tomorrow World, and he's like kind of into dubstep. He's playing these bass records, cool. And then um, I, I seen the videos, and he DM me from um, from the not DJ from the, Diesel, DJ what? Diesel, and I was like, is this the real account? So I, had, I like, and, and like I had to look like because it, it just was like, yo, real bro, I'm like, I'm I'm a big fan or some shit like that. I was like, what? So I had to like check like who was following that account too. And You're like, like and, there and, was other people that were because it wasn't even verified yet. And, was, and was annoying, like, this is you're a diehard Laker fan. Oh man, yeah. So this is I didn't tell I didn't tell <laughs> Shaq I didn't tell Shaq that I'm a diehard Laker fan. So like at least a year into knowing him, I'm like I think I, yeah I interviewed him for my radio show, and then yeah, there's probably footage of this on YouTube. And I was like, by the way, like you know I'm like a di like I will like literally like people that know me will will make fun of me. Because I'll be like, oh, what year was that? Oh, yeah, that was the year where, like, uh, Kobe won his f fourth ring. Like, that was 2009. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll reference, yeah. I'll know when things happened. Because of Lakers. Because of what was going on with the Lakers. <laughs> Even, like, the shitty seasons of, like, yeah, like, so. Yeah, when so, we had D-Lo back before, it was, that's, that's when I played yeah, that set. Yeah, like, the first, <laughs> the first year of D-Lo, uh, which was, uh, I believe, Kobe's last year, though. Uh, I, went to, I went to his last game. He's a high, he, he's a diehard Laker fan, oh, too. yeah. I went to Kobe's last game. I was like, "This has got to be one of the best days of my life." Honestly, that was. But, <laughs> oh my! It, it, the only way I can describe it, man, and especially like now, everything has happened. Like now, it's like magnified, like times a thousand. But like even at the time, it was like, it was like watching like a movie script in real life. It was like watching a video game in real life, and it was like Fuck. the fourth quarter was just like, and, and then he he like. Cause like we're like we're like like playing the game and we're like, I'm like this is our expectation. Like if you're a real Laker fan, obviously it's like for those who don't know, it's like okay, Kobe was banged up like crazy that year. Like his knee was all fucked up, shoulder was fucked up. He's he was on his last leg. Said I'm I'm out after this year, and then um, we're like you know what they're, they're gonna let him shoot a lot, so he's probably gonna get like 20 points, and we're gonna lose. Cause Utah also was like a, kind of a fringe playoff team at the time. So all right, he's probably gonna get 20. We're gonna lose. So like. And then no, he missed his first four shots. Like people forget that, and then they were like, "Oh, he might have the I guess as tough as Kobe is up here is like, oh, he might have the nerves like, going going on right now." And uh, then he got like a, I think a baseline jumper to fall over Gordon Hayward, and then it was like, "Okay, he needs one to like go in." And then now he starts cooking. So he starts to hit shots, hit shots. But we're still like down like f at least fifteen most of the game. You know what I mean? We're like, all right, we're still gonna lose. We're like, okay, Kobe is like, uh, uh, I think he had like. 20 at halftime, 25 at halftime, something like that. And we're like, all right, we're still down double, double digits. But then slowly, slowly, and especially it gets into the fourth quarter, 
and they, the building gets just louder and louder. And, uh, and then he, he just starts to hit shot. He doesn't miss for like, I think it was the last like six minutes of the game, he didn't miss a single shot. And then you're he like, went for 60? He went for 60, like, like, but he keeps getting closer. And we're like, oh, this is great. We're cheering, like, a crowd, it's Staples Center at the time. It's going crazy. And we're like, oh, this is insane. But we're still losing. But then we keep looking at the scoreboard, like, he's getting a little closer, a little closer. And like, it's like 97 to 91. And then, or, and then, like, it's like, oh my God, it's like, I think it was like 99, 95, 97, 99. Then, uh, and then, then, then it's like, oh shit, it's like a last shot. They get the, re like, oh my God, like, Kobe has a chance to win the fucking game. And like, I remember I, I saw the video, I'm like, I'm recording, and, like, I'm going crazy, but like, I, I, he, he hits a shot and I just don't react because I'm just like, I can't believe this actually happens. And then he hits a shot, gets fouled, ices free throws for 60. And then, yeah, that was the game. That was the most insane shit I've seen in my life. It, yeah, yeah, that's what it, he was it saying. Like, it was like it a felt movie. Like a script. It, it felt and, like and, you couldn't write it. And what's better. crazy, yeah. one of my homegirls went and she's like, bro, she's like, the nosebleeds felt like 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 you were on the floor seat. Yeah. I, I had a friend uh, went to like game seven at uh, Lakers uh, against Celtics. And I was like, what was it, the comparison? Like the energy is like, is like the same. It was like, like. It was like it was the most intense, yeah. And we were all just screaming. It was like insane. That's amazing. So you told Shaq. Yeah. So was no, 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 that was great talk because Shaq not Kobe, because yeah. not a lot of people could sit here and talk about how they won a Kobe's last game. And RP Kobe yeah. I, I I was obviously growing up when he when he won his first three wings, I was only like three, four. Yeah. So I don't remember that. But I definitely saw him win his other two. Yeah. And that was fire to see. Yeah. So um, you were like, hey Shaq. Yeah, I told him like I was like, you know, by the way, I'm like a diehard Lakers fan. Like and then we talked about it. I was like, oh, he's like, oh, so you, did you like, you, you grew up like watching me play? I was like, yeah, like, like me and Kobe and like, yeah, I was like, and then we talked about like, yeah, like the, the combat against Portland, like Kobe throwing the lob up to him and all that. And like, um, yeah. And then like, I didn't want to tell him off the jump because I didn't want to like, <laughs> I didn't want, you know, I didn't want him to get it twisted or anything, but like he is, yeah, to, to answer your like question from like seven minutes ago, <laughs> nah, nah, you he, good. He, he is uh, such a great dude, first of all. And like I said, the reason I respect him was his approach. I played my, my first show, um, my first really, really big show. I shouldn't say really, really big show, but show like hard ticketed show of that scale was at the Palladium. Uh, this is before the time before you came. This is in 2019. And um, I'm like, I got to do it big. Like all my family, friends coming. Like, and then um, Shaq and I, yeah, we had talked on, 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 and then like, oh yeah, he had DM me. And then I'm on the runway in, in, in Korea about to fly back to LA. I just got like a random Korean dude sitting next to me. All of a sudden I get like, we swap numbers. I all of a sudden I get like, oh, FaceTime from Shaquille O'Neal. I'm like, all right, I guess I got to answer. He's like, and he goes like, what's up, legend? And then I'm like, <laughs> I'm just talking, I was just talking to him. Like, he's like, oh man, I, I love your shit and stuff. And like, just the most genuine dude. And we kept talking over email. And then he's like, one, one time he was like, I'd love to rock a show with you. And I was like, actually, I got something coming up. You know, it's a Palladium show in LA. And then uh, he came out. Shaq did not ask for a dime for me. And he, he doesn't do this at all for the money. He doesn't need it, clearly. And the, he, he does it for the love of the game. And he came out. We played back to back. Uh, it was insane. I brought Snoop out after that, too. And, and then that was just like, man, it, like doing the second Palladium show, I was like, how the fuck am I going to top, like bringing out Shaq and Snoop in LA? It was like, yeah. And, and, and Chippa, when we were going to your show, my homie PZ, the, not the cameraman, the other one that was with me. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I was here for his last oh, one. Yeah. And they were like, fool, when he brought out Shaq, that shit went, he's like the crowd fool, like you could hear the floor like, <laughs> and then he's like, but when Snoop came out, he's like, that fool changed the game forever. Yeah. Like, and, and he, and, and I was like, dude, that's sick. Yeah. That was super sick when I went because Mahami, shout out Mahami Double P. He's like just he's the one that's like been raving since like 2018, 2017, probably even yeah. before that. And he just knows everything. He knows every song, every DJ. He did up to game yeah. and he's like, bro, the last play to him so sick. He's like 2019, we went crazy. No, I remember that. That, that, that. Like I could play whatever show the rest of my life. Like that one uh is gonna like I'm gonna take that to the grave with me. What was that. crazier, meeting Shock or meeting Snoop? Uh Dude, I don't know. It's about equal. I can't, I can't really rank it. It's, it's, it's the thing. It's like you grew up in Southern California. It's like, especially in that era, it's like it was like Shaq, Kobe, and Snoop. Like that, <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. So like, so it was. Is, would you say it was e e equivalent? Yeah, I would say yeah. I mean, it, it was like it, it's a it's literally like who you grew up like. Like that's what was you know 
tough about Kobe's passing was just like probably like him more than anybody maybe it was like like there's no one that could pass within the city I know you see Nipsey murals and everything everywhere but like people that we g watched literally grow up from a 17 year old kid in your te television your household for 20 years uh, and then you know somebody leaves leaves his earth like that like that that makes it a lot and tougher to a handle. A lot, a hundred percent. So like, yeah, not to get on a, uh, you know, a, 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 a great sad topic, note, yeah. a sad note, but like, yeah, like to bring it back to like Shaq and Stoop, like those guys are like, they're along the same line of like, we we, we, we grew up uh, with them in our households, on our radios, you know, it's part of the culture. That's amazing. And I think you embracing yeah. that is what makes it more beautiful. Like, I think you being, and, 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 and I've seen you play a couple of times, and one thing you always do is pay homage to California. Hundred percent. And people, and I feel like even when you even when you throw in the super old school West Coast shit, yeah. like whether it's different. And and I've been around different races. When we obviously when you're raving, I've been around Asian, white, Mexican, Latino, black, any culture. If, if people hear that next episode, little tone, or they hear any Snoop or Cube, and you make sure you pay homage, yeah, I'm always like, it brings everybody together. You know, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I mean, that's that's the that's the great thing about music. You know what I mean? Is is, is as long as and that's like when you're saying like it, it's. All my, my my greatest like relationships with like you know business or friendships or whatever like it's if there's a foundation of respect and like you know paying homage and showing love to someone like that always goes extremely far you know what I mean like that Amazing. That, that means a lot to me too you know what I mean so Fire. whenever you're approaching someone like that I think it it, it, it goes a long way so um, I think it goes a longer way than honestly like like a lot of kids are like out here kind of just like a little thirsty and just like trying to you know be opportunists or like look for a handout like if you just like stay present <clears throat> and you stay respectful and people see that you're a hard worker i think it can you know go far and go for it yeah hell yeah um how small did he look next to shack i mean, I mean it's, oh it, me yeah i mean like shit like i still like yeah, this is a massive dude. Like, I, even just giving him a high five, it's like <laughs> you're high five at like two people at the same time. It's like, it's like crazy. Yeah. Cause I can imagine you and Shaq. I'm like, dude, this was like seven something. Oh yeah, we got we got pictures. It's like it's in videos. It's like yeah. There's one video. I, actually, there's one picture. It, like the perspective on it is hilarious. Cause I'm standing on stage, and then Shaq. I'm like standing on stage back here, and then Shaq is in the foreground, and then like I'm at the end of the uh, end of the table. And then he's in the foreground, so it looks like I'm like half of my actual size, and then he's his normal gigantic size. So it looks like I'm they like photoshopped me, like, and I'm giving him a high five, like a reaching towards him. So it looks like they like photoshopped me, like. I'm it like is like you're just you just there compared. Yeah. Damn, that is amazing. It like, it like magnified the size difference. But see, only like obviously I don't know too many DJs, um, but your genuine love for this shit, and I think just for the culture, and then. Whether raving is 100% California or not, but you paying homage to your hometown and your city and everything, yeah. it's something that you gotta like. I gotta tip my hat off to because I see you, and and like I said, like I've said multiple times, seeing you play those records while you're performing, but being able to get love from probably one of the most famous guys of all time, Snoop Doggy Dog, man, and being him able to just and and then for, did he perform a song or he did? Yeah, uh, Snoop came out and played. Uh, I had him do. Uh, Next episode and drop it like it's hot. Sick. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was amazing. Yeah, and, and yeah, I always show love to like I came up here. You know what I mean? And yeah. Like, we're saying like, uh, I like the people that supported me since day one. Uh, that were you know coming to my shows and it was like you know, fifty to hundred people there. Like that that it means a lot to me. And like like even musically like just the influences like like I would listen to like like Dre and Snoop growing up and even like before that like just my, par <clears throat> my parents would play old records like 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 Prince and like Parliament Funkadelic and shit like that shit. so I had like a really cool like musical upbringing that was like and very taste. it was very yeah, and, yeah yeah tasteful I would say yeah and, and it's very rooted in uh in in the west coast like it's like yeah especially like I don't know you, it's so hard to like say that you grew up even just as a as a musician say like like especially that Dr. Dre 2001 album did it influence you in a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, but especially if you came up from LA, like, no, like there's no way you can say you were. <laughs> yeah. That. And that's sick. And that's, and that's that, that album like really at the time was like, everybody else is here. We're raising the bar for production here. We're going to bring all these studio musicians in and it's going to sound just like 
on, a, on another level, even just the mix downs and like just the sound quality of it all is insane. And that's and, and that's something you can never take away. And and that's dope. And shout out to where everybody else is from. Like shout out if you're from Mississippi yeah. or or Oregon, but we're from the West Coast yeah. and we just have to, we're blessed with the we're blessed with the sound. Cause not everybody's blessed with the sound. Yeah, I mean it's about a bit like that's the thing too, is like it's it's about, you know, we've had culture, especially like hip hop culture that's like grown over the years. Obviously New York has it. Uh, yeah. but like even like like watching the like the South was laying the foundation. Uh, and then, like, you know, in the early 2000s, they started to get you know, people to break through, you know, like Outkast, Lil John, like Thanks. from Atlanta. And, and uh, there was people that broke through and, like, broke down barriers. So, like, if you're in Mississippi, and uh, I think uh, David Banner's from Mississippi, I think. It was, like, the one guy I know is from Mississippi, but I think uh, – I could be wrong. Somebody fact-check me on that. But uh, <laughs> I think he's from Mississippi. But, like, that's the point. Is like, If you're from – I don't know. Wherever you're from in the world. You, Yes, there we go. We got the we got the facts. Who's the guy uh, Joe, on Joe Rogan? He's like throw it to Jamie. Jamie, yeah, uh, Jamie, did. Uh, look that up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like wherever you're from, you can start that culture. It's not just in you know hip hop culture, like in dance music culture now too. It's like crazy. Like you can go to like to like Denver. They have like crazy like like bass music, like dubstep culture out there, and like that's part of like what that city is. So whoever you are, you can be the change that you want to see in the world and start that culture from wherever you're at, you know? And that's amazing, bro. Thanks we, to the internet. And, yeah, shout out the fucking internet. Um, why don't DJs have swag? <laughs> you know, man. I, I, you guys dress I, I, like I, I, like actors. <laughs> I can only speak for myself. Uh, no, always... no, motherfucker. There's a lot of you. De oro, my boy, got no swag. You, no swag. Oh, that's, Shaq, that's, that's no lie. swag. That's a, that's a lie. You, 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 see, you see my fit? <laughs> you see my fit at the High Power Show? That was nice. It was nice. I, I, had, a, I had Marnie on. It was nice. It was nice. It was nice. Oh. It, it was nice, but also he takes off his shit all the time. Like, if you have the flannel, it's not going to last that long. I, 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 Ten listen, songs listen, in? That's a lie, because if you, if you, we, have, we have game tape. We have the whole set. Didn't take the, It was burning up, and I had flames coming out of the stage. You had flames coming up. It was, I was burning up, but I said... Fashion over comfort. <laughs> so I went with that. But it, like, I, I'll say this, like, uh, sort of answer the same question. Like, I think for me personally, like, I, I think it's cool when a DJ has their own sense of individuality. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like I had the mustache thing. It wasn't because I was trying to be different. It was just like, it's just thing, something I like fucked around and did one day and then posted a picture to Twitter and then everybody was like, you got to keep us. So I was like, okay. And then it became... It ended up becoming this like sort of like signature look. Yeah, you're like, like a villain with the mustache. Yeah, I know. People think I'm a villain or a coke dealer. Like one, <laughs> maybe both. I don't know. One of the two. But like. And 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 the crazy thing about that is that you just shaved it off at EDC. I did. Yeah. And was that like a was that like a, I want to shave it off or it was like? Oh, I mean, yeah, it wasn't like for spur of the moment. I had the buzzer, <laughs> but I thought about it before, and I was like, yeah, it was it was a it was a thing. I had it. I had the mustache for like. Uh, Shit, like years, several years, like uh, I don't know, like eight years or something like that, and like nine years maybe. Damn, and you then, had that shit for a minute. I know, and then I, and then I, uh, I was just like, uh, okay, if I'm gonna do this, I can't just show. It, it felt weird too to just like show up one day and I'm just like clean shaven, you know, and just like post a picture to Instagram or something. I, I'll, I'm gonna make a little bit of a moment out of it, and uh, what better place to do it at, at than EDC? So EDC. I'm like, I'm gonna like. Let you guys experience this moment with me since you've been along throughout this journey. Yeah, for the, the journey of my facial hair. So I'm just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shave it on stage. Yeah. And bro, like, it was literally like he, he did it on the Jumbotron to like 70,000 people. They were watching this with just, yeah. and girls were like, no! Because you know, because you know, because so, yeah. you know, I, you got the groupies. They were like, no, nobody! <laughs> They were trying to sell his. I don't know who he gave it to. Maybe it blew in the wind. I don't Maybe know. Blew, it, I don't know. It just hit somebody while they were rolling. Just if you see like, if you see anybody on eBay, it's fake though. Don't, don't buy the hype. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, and 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 like, I'm asking this question just because I feel like it's always like so growing up, right? When I would mention to my mom, like now that I'm like, oh, mom, I'm gonna go to EDC, or I, t I was talking to her today, and I was like, oh, man, fuck it, was a comment interview this artist today, mm -hmm. this DJ, and she, I was showing her all the videos, and she like, wow, that's crazy, and my mom asked me, she sat there and was like, all these events that you've gone to for the last two years, do you do drugs? I don't do drugs, but I'm not, I don't smoke weed or anything. I was like, she's like, do you do drugs? And I'm like, no. She's like, are you lying? And I'm like, why? She's like, 
Because that's the thing, no? And I'm like, I don't think so. I'm, I'm like, I don't think everybody's off mushrooms and ecstasy. And she's like, but are you? I'm like, she's like, are you, she's like you don't have to. She's like, you're an adult. You can do what you want. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't yeah. do Molly or yeah. ecstasy, mom. I'm like, um, I just drink for locals. Yeah. Like, or I, I'll take, I'll sneak in a water bottle and just get it cracking. Yeah. I'm not doing Molly, mom. I totally yeah. promise. And she was like, but everybody does it right. I'm like, mom. And no, you'd be surprised. Yeah. You'd be surprised on how many people are there so not not a completely sober, but you know, like it's viral. And I'm like, but you guys as DJs, and and I remember we asked the auto this. I'm like, how do you guys feel about like when you guys hear like the stigma about like the events being so drug based and like b b like Molly and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean that's the stigma around it. I think if you go to any like show that has music, at, at, like people are going to be doing that shit. Yeah, I personally don't do. I just drink. You yeah. Know? Have you ever? Nah, not really. I, 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 the thing is, like, I like being in control. And, like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't like, I don't know. I'm cool with reality. So I'm like, I'm just going to, like, do this. And I feel like I'm in control when I drink. And, yeah. and, I, and I, I enjoy a good drink. So I'm just like, I'm just going to drink. 100%. Yeah. So, but, but like, yeah, I mean, like, to each their own. Uh, no judgment if you do or don't do it. Either yeah. way, it's like, uh, as long as you're being responsible when you do it, whatever, then not, not like, fucking being a jackass when you're doing, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, no, yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's funny, right, because I remember when Dodo came on the brown bag, we had him before on my other pod, and he was telling about that, and then my mom was like, are you sure? And I'm like, mom, like, I don't do fucking drugs, like, but shit, but, it, but I've always wondered, like, how you guys see it, especially, like, even, like, the incidents, like, at the Astro Worlds of the world or whatever the situation is, right? right? And I'm like, I'm like, I wonder, like, obviously, and, and I've seen DJs, like, stop sets, like, hey, you know, be careful, you guys, or... Don't do too much. And do you ever like plan? Like, do you ever like think like that while you're DJing? Like, because like yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely bad situations you can get caught up in. But um, everywhere, yeah, though. like uh, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't been in a, in a situation where I've. I've been, but that's like, a good. I'm not putting it on you. I, I don't no, want to put. The, I don't want to put that energy on you because. No. But 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 I was I was just thinking like. No, but you do. As think, a, you do think about it because yeah. It's yeah, it's a large crowd. Like you know, we all have like negative thoughts, and your mind wanders into bad areas. It's just, like it's a large crowd, and like you, you never want so, anybody like feel unsafe or like, like yeah. we're there to fucking party and party, have fun. Know? I mean, like, have fun. Like so, it's like you never want somebody to like yeah, like even feel even like certain times like people are like oh like, and I, I've heard stories like oh man, I, I, I tried to get into that tent and it was just it was crammed. Like people got, got there too early before me and shit. You know what I mean? So it's like. You know, it comes a little bit with the territory, but as long as people are like not, you know, fucking, like once again, like just being dicks. Yeah, like, being jackasses. Yeah, like, like yeah, like so. I, I don't really, I haven't been in that situation. Yet. That, and and that's, I'm, I'm happy for you. I don't want you in that situation. I was just, <laughs> no, I was just no, asking. That's a that's a a yeah, no, it's all good. Um, you know, life happens. You get older. How long do you see yourself still doing this for? I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm like, like, I, I think that. I'm just gonna take it day by day, honestly. Like, I like I can also see a, a world where I, you know, I'm not traveling as much. I pick and choose uh, when and where I want to travel, and I produce like I just get back to my roots of just just being a straight a producer. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, I started out making rap records, and like I could, I could easily, you know, do that tomorrow. It would just be like a very hard stop. Like I would make like a smoother transition into it. But I'm not quitting anytime soon. Even though I did. Kind of pump fake y'all a little bit at the EDC set. Oh, he did. He's like, you guys, <laughs> this will be the last time y'all see me. And the the crowd just goes quiet, and it goes like a big oh, like, like you know, like gassed. Shrek. Kind of gas, yeah. Yeah, and then he was like, with my mustache. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was yeah. like, I was like, oh, when I seen that. Um, what about the nightlife? Obviously, you still DJ, but you go home right away. These days, yeah, I go, I go home mostly, right? like 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 after I'm done. Yeah, I'll take take a second, catch my breath, and whatever. Yeah. So it's not like, hey, I just DJed here. Now let's go get fucking drunk at the club next door. <laughs> nah, no, not really. I mean, I mean, once in a while I will go out after, yeah. Okay, but, yeah, that's that's. But it's fun. like, I don't know, man. This is the thing is like, you're doing like three shows a weekend, a lot of times, and you're on like four or five planes a week. It's like, it, dog, you it, travel it so. Zones, it's, it, that shit will catch up to you, bro. You travel so much, yeah. and you be like in Asia, and then the next day be in Kentucky at the <laughs> Derby, and then you're posting yourself in Asia, watch the game the next day yeah. at 4 a.m. while it's like yeah. 7 p.m. here, and then out of nowhere, you're in L.A. doing the show at the Palladium. Yeah. A lot of traveling. 
It's a lot. Like, that, that was the one thing I definitely, first of all, thank God I'm able to sleep on planes because if I couldn't, I would straight up quit. I would just fucking die or quit. <laughs> like, so thank God I'm able to sleep on planes. Um, but that's the one thing I think I learned early on, especially in the first few years of touring, is, like, you got to just, like, listen to your body a little bit. Like, if, if your body is telling you to take a nap, go take a fucking nap. Like, because it's, it's a marathon. Like, it's yeah, yeah. not, like... It's not like okay, this weekend and that's it. That I'm back to normal life, or you know, it's it's a it's a it's a marathon. It doesn't stop a lot of times. So yeah, you gotta just like listen to your body. Kind of, I try to keep like a mental clock about how much like sleep I'm getting. Even like I'm like, shit, like okay, I got three hours last night. So like tomorrow maybe I gotta catch up on a few and maybe I can sleep on a plane. Like you're doing like math constantly where I can get in, like little. That's little sick, fool. You know? But it's and, like I, I get what you're saying. Like it's a it's not a stressful thing, but it is. You are, your body is important. You're and, putting and your body through stress. Yeah, facts. And also, you know, you are blessed of doing this. So it could, does come with the territory yeah. where you maybe are traveling in oh, four yeah. or five planes out of, in two days. But, but I, I can't complain, man. It's like. It's beautiful. I, I've seen people complain about it. And like, I'm not here to like not try to empathize with your struggle. But like, we're not fucking coal mining out here. Like we're not. We're like. We're, we're pressing we're, a button. We're blessed to, yeah, to get on planes. <laughs> and we're and, and like. And, like, play music for people. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of, like, worse realities out there, man. Like, 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 just be thankful you're able to do that. 100%. And if you don't want to do it, just don't do it. You know yeah. What I mean? But, like, I, I try to not complain. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, like, I'll grunt here and there during the day when, like, you know, there's somebody fucking, like, kicking you on the plane, kicking the back of your seat or some shit. Like, you know, little things that like we, we you're uh, traveling. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, Sometimes you'll have a, like I'll have a, like a really long shitty travel day, and then you get like somewhere like, especially in, like Asia or like Europe, where the crowds are absolutely insane. And then you play for like a festival of people, and you're like, you know what, well, that was worth it at the end of the day. You know? What yeah, I mean? yeah. Have you ever um, and then uh, oh, fuck what the fuck that shit just slipped my mind right now. Um, have you ever missed a a, a set because of a flight? Cut the lead, maybe. No, I, I don't. Oh, uh, d delay. Uh, yeah, there was one, well, once. This once in a while, like it, like your flight away just straight up canceled, and there's if there's you try to exhaust like other other options, and there's no option. Like I think one time I had to play in Vegas uh, at the win after uh, playing Atlantic City, so I have to, like fly cross country. And, like we had to reschedule it because there was some storm and some shit. Like, but like most of the time, yeah, most of the time there's like you try to you try to. Take it. I don't like to take the earlier flights, but if you have to, like, you take it. Yeah, yeah. Like, cause I like to get my sleep. So, like, like, you take the earlier flight, and then, God forbid, that gets canceled. There's another option after. Fuck it. I'm a red eye guy. Get me on the I, earliest listen, flight. I've been doing that recently, actually, for when I go to the East Coast, cause I, I'm like, well, do I want to wake up at six in the morning, and fly over to like DC on some brutal flight, or do I just want to get in a night early, just pay the extra night at the hotel, and just like. Fuck Facts. Like, and then I've been doing that recently, so I've just been like, fly out earlier that night if I'm going cross country or yeah, something. Yeah, that's, that's what we'll do too. I would like, let's say I have to be okay. there on Friday. Yeah. I'll get there, like, let's say I have to be there Friday night. Thursday, Friday. I'll get there, I'll get there, I'll leave like Thursday at 5 p.m. Fucking yeah. pay for the extra room, but yeah. we're comfortable, not in a fucking rush, and exactly, we get to sleep yeah. a little in. Um, One of the things that DJ, though, that I, that I always hear, like, is the amount of money there is in your guys' world. And I'm not in your pockets. This is just what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like no, that? I'm waiting for you to ask a question. I'm waiting. The question is, was, and, yeah. and, and you don't have to give me a direct answer. I don't want a direct answer. What is the most you've been paid for to DJ? And you could throw a ballpark. It doesn't have to be the exact amount, but it could just throw it in the air. My, my ballpark is more than enough. <laughs> That's, I'll leave it at that. I've, I, I heard one time that that a DJ was paid 30000 Is can, can that be factual? I'm not saying this to you. It could be. It could be factual. If it you're asking me if something could be factual, it could be factual. Anything, could be, yeah. anything could be factual, right? <laughs> What's that? That's a good one. What's in define enough? <laughs> His manager's like, don't fucking ask me that one. No, no, no. Because it's, 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 uh, um, it's not like, it doesn't blow my mind, but it blows my mind. I'm like, fuck, so just push the button. Make 30000 But obviously, it's not just that. But it's just that's just a funny no. me talking shit where I'm like, where I was sitting there. I know. It's, and, it's and I was kind having, of a funny And, and I was having a conversation, behind. and I was like, wait. Yeah. He said 30000 He's like, yeah. 
And I was like, huh. And I'm like, 30,000. I'm doing the math, right? Yeah. And I'm like looking at the time sets and I'm like, so how much is this fucking guy paying, babe? <laughs> You're like, if that guy is, yeah, then, yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Who knows? Who knows? Also, um, you're really good friends with Dylan Francis. Yes. How would you feel when, like, David Dobrik would just make fun of him all the time? I never really watched uh, that, that stuff, honestly. Like, it, it, I'm not saying it, like, a, in a disrespectful way. I just never... Yeah, I never, you never, never watched, watched I didn't really watch the, his, like, relationship with David Dobrik. Yeah. yeah. But he would get made fun of a lot. I've seen, like, the, he would come to the, the Vegas shows. I'd, I'd see that. Like, yeah, and then, and then i see when he would just be like, yeah, you're just a pudding pusher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, like... I think if you could do whatever you do with like a sense of humor about it, like <laughs> I'm not out here like taking taking myself too seriously. Like I'm like, you know, the greatest thing to walk God's green earth. But I'm like, if you if you can laugh at it a little bit, like I think that's great. Amazing. You know okay. Like, it's like, yeah, I, I just always wondered. You prefer nice shows or day, or day shows? Uh, depends. I mean, sometimes it's nice, like the day shows, especially playing like Florida or like even in Vegas, like. They can get like cracking and like super ratchet. Like that's it's honestly like whatever it is is like uh, it, the like, like I said before. Like if the crowd's energy is right and they're just having a crazy time, like I'm having a better time. You know what I mean? Like, Amazing. Yeah. Have you ever DJed somewhere randomly? Like just pulled up. Like 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 maybe and 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 I've, and and to me when I think about you guys pulling up with your USBs, I'm like, do they just walk around like kind of like a Yu-Gi-Oh card? Like, yeah. and then they just connect. You, you gotta stay strapped. Yeah, in fact, you gotta stay <laughs> strapped. Have you ever just pulled up to like a random spot and obviously they knew who you were? And you're like, can I? Yeah. Kind of like to like practice. Not necessarily to practice, but just like I mean, sometimes you want to test out new records and stuff. But like, it, it, I I especially like um, you know when I was coming up to like. Showing up at random Mumbaton parties, like at warehouses, like out in like like fucking East LA or like downtown warehouse district or like fucking uh, Alhambra and shit, like just pulling up and just playing. You know what I mean? Just like plugging in and just playing and, and like uh, just unannounced. Uh, it, it, it's it's fun because it's just like it's very spur of the moment. Like and like it's just if if like I said if the energy's right there like like if it's a it's a ratchet party it's like it's a real fun to play you know? uh, yeah because I can only imagine me being like at a at any event right and like a warehouse like at 3 a.m and I just know where you pull up and start playing I'll be like fuck yeah, yeah. it's just worth the 20 bucks yeah I know and like I, I mean like I I feel like it's 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 still I don't know it still keeps me like tapped in with like what's going on too if I'm able to pull up somewhere and just like I don't know. I, I I I would cruise around a lot with like et cetera et cetera and like pull up to random shit. Like especially coming up. Like yeah, those are really. I haven't done that in a minute, honestly. But like those are really fun times, honestly. Fire. Yeah. And do you think you could DJ the quinceanera? Like if they were Man. like they're like Valentino, come. We have fifty thousand. You can't can DJ our, our daughter's quinceanera. Listen, if anybody is watching out there that wants to me to DJ their quinceanera, I'll do it if we can work it out. I will do it. Like, I, I kind of, like, listen, like, I kind of want a King Sierra for myself. I'm not going to lie. Wow, really? I, I want, I, like, they seem extremely fun. I, I, I want You probably went to some, though, right, growing up? Yeah, I mean, like, bro, like, I, I, like, some people, like, will, like, be, like, playing my music on, like, like King Sierra's and shit. It's, like, insane. Dude, King Sierra's are sick. You know, it's yeah. crazy. I, I sat down with Bradley Martin. And he loves Latinas. Bradley Martin's part of the Elk Boys. And where I'm mm. sitting there with him, and I'm like, "Have you ever? Did he ever go to Quinceanera growing up?" And he kind of looked at me like confused. And I'm like, "Dude, I gotta throw Bradley Martin at Quinceanera." That's a big deal. What if we throw Bradley Martin at Quinceanera and Valentino Con DJs it? <laughs> That'd be sick. Well, fuck, we'll get you paid. Listen, maybe not the the, the, the ADC budget. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, but it was crazy how. Um, but but I've always thought about that, right? Like see, seeing you in these stages, I'm like. I wonder if I had the amount of money, and I was just like, "Hey, come DJ my, my I mean, fucking my DJs, grandpa's DJs funeral." Do play, do DJs will play private events for like the right amount of money. Yeah, hundred percent. I saw a video like a long time ago, like Kanye West showed up at some Dubai sheik's like wedding. Like it was just him. It was just him like like rapping or singing, and then like people like not really paying attention to him because <laughs> they just like it's it's like oh whatever it's like whatever it's like money is no object to them, and he was just like it was like. 17 people there, and he was just like <laughs> rapping. It was just like, okay. He was doing Good Morning? <laughs> yeah, he was doing like all his hits. And like, yeah. He's probably got paid like a million dollars. I'm sure he got paid some stupid check to, if it's like Dubai money, it's like. Yeah. This is some crazy shit. Saudi Have money. you ever done some, some Dubai shit? 
I've been to Dubai twice. It's a dope place. I've never played a show there, though. I kind of want to. It's a, it's a cool city. It's really, really clean. There's a lot of, they got a lot of, like, all the shit we got in America, like, they got all over there. Like, every department store, every, all that shit. Like, Hell, yeah. Every fast food chain, like, everything, yeah. Man, that's amazing. And and I think like as your career, your lifestyle, I'm like, bro, this was so interesting. Like and I was like, and I was like, he's kind of mysterious too. Yeah. I have so many questions for him. But you feel me? I don't want to hold too much of your time. But before you get out of here, yeah. can you give me your top five f- upcoming DJs? And, and 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 it doesn't have to be in order. It could just be people that you have been paying attention to and you feel like they got a nice buzz and you really, you know, you yeah. you you I've always loved what Wookiee is doing. I love um Damn, I'm like blanking. Like, I don't know any music right now. I hate when people ask me this because I'm just like, I'm for, forgetting. I always like forget. Um, uh, I love everybody like that, that's, they're not up and coming, but like everybody out, like they're already like established, I'm saying. Cause, but like, uh, like everybody in like the techno scene right now, like Charlotte DeWitt, Amelie Lenz, um, uh, there's this dude, Era, this dope. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. Um, uh, this dude Hellbound is making some dope techno. Shit, who am I? You know, I, I swear I got some good promos the other day from like, oh, this dude uh, Ray Burger, who played on at my Palladium show. Yeah, facts. He's like, he's next level, and he infuses like a lot of uh, uh, like Latin Mexican music. Yeah, like, corridos and stuff. Like with dance music, and his shit bangs. He's and he's such a good dude too. Like I, I'm really rooting very hard for his success. He's a great dude. Like if you're gonna. Listen to somebody after this. Go listen to Ray Burger. One word, Ray Burger. He's from Dallas, Texas. He's yeah, I, I I followed him when you when you posted him. Yeah, I, I I saw like what he was doing. He did the um, he did the Bad Bad remix. Yeah, he he, he remixed a song went, with. It went kind of viral. It like, went kind yeah. of viral. Yeah, the one with Grupo Firme and yeah. um, and for Grupo Frontera. I seen it on TikTok. I didn't know who he was. Obviously, I just yeah. heard the sound, and there was then a video of me playing it at EDC. I and think. then 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 there was a video of you yeah, when yeah. you played at EDC as well. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that shit was sick. Yeah, that was uh. That shit goes so super hard. Yeah, he basically took like the, took the vocal uh, and then like just put like his banging like, kind of fast like kind of techno ish beat. Yeah, like, it was dope. it was dope though. I was yeah. like, I was like, bro, this was fucking killing. He got it. other one. He got a, um, he got a Yo Quiero Bailar. He did a remix of that. He got oh, yeah, fucking yeah. um, what else he, he flipped? He got a song that, because his name is Ray Burger about how how like he he wants a hamburger. Yeah. It's like yo quiero hamburguesa, I guess, I guess, I guess. It's so so fire. You gotta listen fire. to it. It's like la hamburguesa. It's cool. Um, I'm gonna listen to a couple of his yeah. shit. I'm like I said, I seen some of his shit. I seen he was at like some fools that I know, like their homies or whatever. He was like, that fool was at a, some event called Wasted, and I seen that he was performing yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, I and I was I like, that was sick, right. bro. Because he's traveling, you know. So yeah. I, I can only imagine how it feels him being able to go from Dallas to come to <laughs> Southern California, where obviously. The music scene is humongous, and he's able to play for these crowds and he, grow a name. He's really like just popping off right now, and I'm really happy for him. He actually like, I, uh, I the first time I talked to him was like over like uh, over like uh, quarantine. Actually, he just like I, I'm not really on Discord anymore, but like there was like people like, like trying to like start new shit, so people had like Discord things. And he just randomly sent me his music, and he was always super like humble, respectful, nice. It's back to what I was saying earlier, like he's yeah. like, definitely one of those guys that just like he's hungry. Always, he's hungry, but like in a respectful way and not in a thirsty way. And he always would just send me his new music. And I was like, man, it's like, 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 you know, he, people didn't really know about him yet back then. Like this was like a few years ago, but like um, now he's like on all these lineups. Yeah, I put him on my lineups and shit. Uh, Diero, I think had him on some stuff. I think Je- he's doing some stuff with Gesture too. Amazing. Um, yeah, he, he's killing it. And, and he's got his, I keep telling him like, just be, continue to be yourself. Like, you Yeah, that's it. important. You have a very unique sound. Uh, and you like you know you you're you're not afraid to show where you come from and that's that's dope because you're not like like the one thing and I think you sort of alluded to like yeah DJs got no swag because it's more a lot of DJs don't want to express their individuality yeah. it, you're seeing a formula of oh this works this guy made this sound and this kind of music and he dresses this way and all his Instagram content is is very fabricated it, it looks like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're just gonna like replicate that in a very like, I can see through it personally like an authentic way of like we're just gonna take this cookie cutter shit and like redo it, but like someone like Ray Burger is like that's a one on one. Yeah, he's wearing I mean? like, a sombrero on his shit. You, you kind of compare him, I guess, a little bit to Dior sound a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, yeah. That's he's very yeah yeah yeah. He wears the big the, the yeah the, yeah the sombrero. He wears like the the fucking tejanas. Yeah. He does his shit though. It's sick. He's sick. And he has glasses and super. That was he a taquache. A crazy mullet. That was a taquache. He has like a mullet, yeah. curly hair. 
and he listens to Grupo Frontera. I'm like, Dick, you're from, and they're from Texas, so you know, it goes hand in hand, but it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. His, his style is super dope, yeah. Definitely, everybody should go listen to Ray Bird. Hell yeah. Well, Valentino Connor, I appreciate you coming here. Oh, oh yeah. I gotta give you a gift. Oh, Shout shit. out Big Chief. Oh, shit. One yeah, of the yeah. sponsorships here. You might not smoke, but if your homies do, maybe. You know what I'm saying? I, I might know some people that do. Okay. <laughs> well, shout out Big Chief. Make sure you Appreciate go tap it. in with them. Wow. They're all over California. Go catch them at your nearest liquor store Very as cool. well. And yeah, man, just shout out Big Chief. They're doing it up. They're, they're doing the I'm gonna do that one separately. They're doing the thing. They're doing it up. And man, go tap in with Big Chief. Make sure you go show love. Tell them Duno sent you. Go to all your dispensaries or order online or order however you want to order. Whether it's legal or not, go get some Big Chief. Still have some good ganja. And we out this motherfucker, Valentino Khan. Appreciate you, man. My listen. brother, I appreciate you coming. He's a busy man. So thank you for hey, coming. Listen, you're a real one, too, because like, like, I, like I mean, I know we both like kind of play phone tag with finally uh, coming yeah, yeah. on. But like, yeah, you've always come through, been respectful. Appreciate uh, that. Shown love, and that means a lot to me, man. 100%. You, yeah. I got a show in San Diego tomorrow, too, if you're trying to pull up. What am I doing tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday? Oh, you know what, though? I gotta fucking have a photo shoot early in the morning. I, was, I don't know why. Actually, if I'm, I'm not, not doing. playing early in the morning, though. What time are you playing? At nighttime. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I have a photo shoot Saturday morning. Oh, the next day. So I'd have to go to San Diego and just. Yeah. But. It's all good. Shit. Listen. Now, you'd be surprised, motherfucker. I'll do, I'll do some stupid shit and just go busting <laughs> all night over there. But yeah, I'll let you know. know. Yeah. Appreciate you. But shout out, you having a show in San Diego? Yeah. When are you gonna have another one in LA? Uh, working on it, man. Like uh, the high power show that we did. We Amazing. Didn't talk about that shit. Like, Let's yeah. talk about it a little All right, bit. Cool. We're, We're going to extend the interview. Stay extended yeah, yeah. cut. This is stay low, stay low longer. Director's cut of the interview. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did. Um, that was the hardest I've ever like worked on production and dialing everything in. And the, the concept of the set, like I got a new movement. It's called high power. And it's, it's, it's really going to be like me and everything I fuck with. Musically too is, is a lot like right now it's a lot of like hard techno influence. With Facts. It. And uh, I, I built we, we built this stage with like plexiglass under it. We're shooting lights up and had a Tesla coil on the stage. It was like a signature of the high power thing. And it's like shooting electricity at it basically. And uh, that was the hardest I ever worked on like production. Like it was an insane show. We had flames and fire. And that shit was crazy. I was yeah. watching it from if I'm looking at you. Yeah, you were there at the left side. Yeah. Amazing, dude. And, and you tell me you're like, do no, dude. I'm gonna kill this prediction. I'm like, I'm gonna go. And, and and oh shit, yeah, of course, yeah. Like, I gotta give a big, big shout out to you because and there is there is film of this. Yeah. Uh, when you had OGZ on the podcast, you put him up on me. Yeah, yeah. And um, and uh, then you were like, yeah, Valentino's got a show. Um, and he's like, oh word. And then he was, you were like, uh, it's a. Uh, when was it? A Friday, Saturday, whatever it was. He was like, it's this weekend. He's like, shit, I ain't doing anything. Like, tell him I'll pull up. <laughs> and then you linked us together. You FaceTime me like, like probably like an hour after you finished shooting that, probably. Yeah, and we then, filmed on a Thursday and it was right up the day before your show. And I was like, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, yeah fuck it. I heard my boy playing. He's like, where's his show at? He's like the Palladium. And also he's he's smart about his career, you know? And I'm like, he has a show at the Palladium. He's like, and 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 he loves. He loves EDM, like yeah, he, yeah. Cousin, and he was like, "Fuck yeah!" And then I just connected you guys. You guys did, and that was dope. Seeing you guys perform together yeah. was amazing. Shouts out, big shouts out to OGZ. Like he's a real one too. Yeah. Like, uh, came did uh, did Musty at Geek League off his new album. I'm promoting OGZ's album now. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, he deserves it though. Um, yeah. But Production, you, of course. People, people were like crazy hype when he came out. Like the whole crowd was like, I could, I could see the video. I was like, hear it. Like everybody was screaming when he came out. So. That was a big moment. Big moment for, yeah, you were saying it too. It's like, you're like, it's gonna be a big moment for LA, and that's what I'm about. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. And, and it was dope, especially seeing the two different worlds collide. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> Obviously, he's in his lane and you're in your lane, but just he knew who you were automatically. Yeah. He, he he's 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 pretty, he's he's up to game on DJ shit. He likes cool. the music. Yeah. So just even being able to connect you guys and and just seeing you guys. And when and when he did Musty, it was lit. Yeah. But it but it was also lit when he did Geekly, because it's like one of the biggest songs trending on TikTok. So yeah. when and and it's funny because me being younger, and I've done this before, but the younger crowd is not gonna know that it's a Petey Pablo sample. I know. Pablo. But he gassed the verse and did so well yeah. on that, on that. Sample that people are like, that's his song, yeah. and I'm like, shout out, shout out, Lil John. Like, Lil John doesn't get enough cr credit as like a producer too. Like, people don't realize. He oh, he produced that, bro. Like, he people don't realize he produced like Too Short, Blow the Whistle, yeah. like all, like E40, Tell Me Where to Go, like a lot of the bass shit even too. Like, <laughs> and then all those Atlanta hits, like yeah. 
Yeah, yeah Lil John, man. Well, Valentino Khan, like I said, you're amazing. I'm, I'm trying to go to San Diego. Yeah. That'd be fire. I just, uh, next sense. next LA show. Coming soon. I'm trying to think. We might, I, might, I just can't announce it yet, but I think we have one locked in. Yeah. Fire. I'm trying to think of when it is. That's sick. I like going to. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? They be. Are you sure? Uh, all my homies, all my homies. And and even like my team, everybody like me going to these, especially everything I do with podcasting. Yeah. They're like at odd. Even when I meet other podcasters, or when I sit down with like all these like corporate people, or just meet all these crazy rappers, they're like, "Hey, fool, we see your story. Like, like, what are you doing there?" And I'm like, "Fool, it's a vibe. Like, it's peaceful." I took the homie little weirdo. I don't know if you know him. He's from San Diego, rapper. Why does that sound super familiar? His name is Little Weird. I yeah, took yeah. him to his first EDC, oh, cool. and we went straight to your set. And then, he, and he was off the shrooms, and he's like, <laughs> and you know how the hands where your set was, they closed and oh, opened? Yeah, the, the big woman. The big woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dog, he was fucking tripping. He's like, <laughs> but he was also like, it was dope, because the rest of it, it wasn't too much for him, but you incorporating hip hop, he liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we took him to Wasteland, and we were listening to fucking hard style the whole time. Yeah, and he was yeah. like, what the fuck? But he was just tripping. But even that, it was like, it was just dope. I always try to, I always tell my man, because you know, they're so like on edge all the time, like rappers, you know, especially with like the street shit and like being too gangster. And I'm like, fool. That shit is cool, whatever, cool. But come to see this shit and it's peaceful, dog. That that is true. Like that is the one thing I will say. Even like, man, even before I got into like the music industry, there's all these stigmas about the music industry, like, oh, everybody's gonna fucking stab you in the back and stuff. Like, honestly, like some of the most great down to earth people, honest people I've met are in the music industry. It's like, listen, kids out there, just don't be a dumbass and don't sign anything without letting a representative look over it. Like, <laughs> let your lawyer look over that shit and you won't get fucked. Like, yeah, like fact. most, most like, like, at least you're eliminating, eliminating like 75% of like the fuckery. If you just yeah. don't, don't sign anything without like letting a lawyer look at it. Like, yeah, and, 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 then, and, and understand also just don't like let the lawyer be like, yeah, it says this and then just sign it. Like, understand what's going on. Just like, like you know. Yeah, like, we said contracts, motherfucker. Yeah, it's like, like, that's like eliminating a lot of the fuckery and like, <laughs> And and like <laughs> I was also gonna just say don't trust anybody, but then I'm like I'm like kind of contradicting myself. Yeah, like, I trust like, a lot of people. <laughs> but the thing is, people people gotta learn. People gotta earn your trust, though. Hundred percent. You gotta you gotta. I, and yeah. and I've been big. Like even just growing relationships. Like even the relationship I have with you. Like like if I didn't feel like it was genuine. Like it just it isn't just an example, right? Like if I didn't feel that GD show was genuine, I probably would have not connected it. But it felt dope. And I, I, it felt good. And that's just me being like. Loving the music and 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 rip. and you coming here just shows like you know what I mean I know we've been playing full time but I, I tell everybody that like it's important how how genuine you are. Hundred percent. Like yeah, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. It's like if you're genuine and respectful, like like people can pick up on that and like you you attract you attract like the energy you put out too. It's like it, it's like people that like you probably relate to this is like everybody has this this idea of L A. Everybody's so fake and shit like that. And like I'm like. And it's like a lot of times, and I'm not sitting on every transplant that comes here from like somewhere else, but it's like, it's a lot of people that come from out of town and they're like, well, where were you going? And they're like, oh, like I was going to this, this, this place and that place. I'm like, yeah, you're probably not going to meet like genuine people there. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's probably a little bit on the environment you're in. And you, you know, know what's what crazy? And listening, if, if you yeah, put out no, a genuine energy, yeah, you're and, get it back, and listening you know? to that, it, a lot has to do with the internet. And I'm going to just be honest, like, even when I would watch all these vlogs, right, or these like, and I and 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 if I, if I, I don't want to say it like that, but like all these vloggers and YouTubers and fucking like TikTok, cause I do I do all that shit. I vlog, I do. But I'm born and raised here, and my background is so different than yours. When you're and I and I just don't want to say just white people, but like when you're like a little white kid from the suburbs and you come here and you expect everybody to like Jen love you, like no, you gotta earn your respect. Like this is before any of this Hollywood shit. This is Los Angeles. You know what I mean? And you understand that you grew up in LA. You understand our culture, you, and when you don't respect it, it's like, well, fuck you then. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 it, it's it's going, especially if like if that's where you're coming from. It's like if you're going anywhere unfamiliar, like yeah, you pay respect when you respect exactly. And and also, you're going to a party in the Hollywood Hills and expect everybody to love you. Yeah, like, that's just, not the way just, you I don't know. Like, okay, some of those Hollywood Hills parties are fun, but it's like. <laughs> you're not gonna God. necessarily make the most like genuine connections. Though, yeah, like, you know what I mean, and, and 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 I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm saying like everybody do their to each their own. But like you can't be like you can't be like everybody's fake in LA and all you do is hang out at Rodell <laughs> and fucking eat 
peaks at the Grove. There's, like there's some nice people on Rodale. A hundred percent. You just gotta see where you gotta see where people are coming from. Exactly. I mean, hundred percent is like people are people too. Like, like there's. As there's douchebags in Los Angeles. There's douchebags in Cleveland, Ohio, too. You yeah, know what I mean? uh, everyone. There's douchebags all around the world. You just you got you have to you gotta have a good radar for people and like Fact. sense of where they're coming from. You know yeah, you mean? definitely gotta have a her. But I think it's one of those things where it's like everybody just to each their own. If you have good intentions, you're gonna probably go longer when you don't have when you, than when you do have bad intentions. Yeah, hundred percent. Like yeah, like we said, it's it's, it's, it's you're attracting that. Energy Facts. Out, you know? Damn, that's amazing though. GD did come out and he did must. That shit was sick. Yeah, it was sick, man. Like yeah, the whole crowd are like they were kind of the whole song too. The, like, they were surprised at first. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah, but I'll. I'll, I'll yeah, right after I threw the first pitch at USC. Yeah. You threw a first pitch at USC. Uh, Base, baseball, baseball game. Baseball game? That's for sick. Mexican Heritage Night. Oh, that's so fire. So I went from there straight to my house, pre game at my house, and then went to the oh, Palladium. And, and it was even, it, but it, that was dope. See, production, 10 out of 10. You yeah. killed it. And you told me, you were like, Duno, I did some sick production. Yeah, I was saying, like, I, I, this is the hardest I've like, worked. You didn't go, it, it was more an event. He went to, you went to the Martinez brother. Oh, maybe like a group thing. So like, like me and my homies. Well, cause you're the DJ, so you're not in the crowd, um, asshole. I don't, I don't, I don't know. This <laughs> but like, but like it's the details. That yeah, I don't yeah. Pick up on. Yeah. So like, if like, let's say like a EDC, or let's say if you get lost, the homies, the homies will be like, all right, or, or like before we get, cause there's no service. Service is horrible. But but at, uh, right there. But but let's say with my homies, they'll be like, okay, this we'll send each other screenshots of of the DJs we're gonna see. Yeah, and then yeah, we're like okay. screenshot our conversation. Hey, I'm gonna be uh, let's just say we're, I'm gonna oh, be at so Valentino you know, like, Con. Little, little yeah, I'm gonna All be right. at Valentino Con on the right side yeah. next to the bar. Hey, y'all really fine. And then we'll meet each other, but then you don't get no service. And sometimes people get there late, and you think they didn't show up, so you leave somewhere else. Yeah. Every once in a while, you gotta turn your message. Like, and like bro, I you was there. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> you pick up. You pick up a lot of tricks. Like, the homies send their messages. Um, they make them green. Yeah, exactly. Don't do that. Yeah, or the old hack of, of well, it was before five G. There was only LTE and three G. And if you turned LTE off, you would get on the. It would kick you to the three G network, and nobody's on the three G network, so it goes super slow. But uh, your shit would still go through. Yeah. So things like that, or they'll be like, or or like something like, okay, we're like Buffu, my like me and my homies, we screenshot our conversation. Like yeah. we're gonna be, we'll meet at this ride. Yeah, like the fucking Ferris wheel. Yeah, shit. whatever the fuck, and it's just yeah. like what the fuck. But yeah, I, I like my homies. My the food, the homies that were are at techno stages all day. Them fools is top left. The homie you, you and them, and the whole SBN, they're gonna be top left. That's where they. I don't care what. Always, if, no matter if what. If I'm at Beyond Escape, Nocturnal, I'm at a Drake concert, and they're there. The they're right top there. left, and I just <laughs> always know I've gotten lost before. And I'm like, okay, this DJ is going to pass in an hour. I'm not going to find them there. I'm going to go meet him here. Yeah. And I know they're going to be top left. And that's where the fuck I find them. Fuck yeah. Or the totems. Oh, that, yeah, that's, that makes it way easier. Craziest totem you've seen? Uh, people make some crazy totems of me. Uh, uh, it, this is, I think there's some cool totems. People take, uh, there's, there's a picture of me, in, like, there's a couple pictures of me in a bathrobe. And people, people, people got totems yeah. of that. But I'm, I'm holding like champagne in a bathrobe and shit. Uh, yeah, sometimes they'll say some like, some pretty wild shit on them. Like, my know. favorite one I seen was I thought Tesla was a car. Amazing totem. <laughs> I've seen some wild shit like <laughs> feed the horse drugs or like shit like bro, it's crazy. But people people hold up wild shit on the on their phones too. It's like <laughs> it's like, and so half the times also. So sometimes if you're gonna hold some shit up on your, on your phone, make sure it's like five words or less. If it is sometimes people hold up a fucking essay on their phone, <laughs> and they're in like the. 35th row and I'm like like how the you really expect me to and then I just go like I don't know like <laughs> cool like you expect me to really see that Valentino like, just wants you to Valentino fuck me <laughs> it's, it's like, they're like on the front way out there like I can't read that shit yeah it, 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 it's, it's, it's a beautiful scene it's a beautiful scene yeah. but like I said man thank you for coming appreciate you man you're an amazing DJ I'm a fan I'm a I I, I Go see you. I tap in with the homie for some tickets and I'm like, Valentino, you got me? But I got you. I'm like, cool. Appreciate you. Love you to death. Appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you're amazing. I think what you're doing for the coaches, what you're doing for Los Angeles is amazing. Thank you, man. Because, you know, not a lot of DJs come from this around the town. And I think you and De Oro are, you guys got to do it back to back in LA. Uh, we're, yeah, we get, maybe we got to do it again in LA because we got, we got uh, we're doing one in DC and we're doing one in Utah. 
So we gotta. We gotta maybe I gotta travel to one of those. I've never been to DC or Utah. Uh, so maybe just fly you, out Utah's and buy. Easy though. You could you could get like a two hour flight there. So less like yeah. Where's Where's Utah's after Nevada? Yeah, it's, it's next to Nevada. Nevada. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Well, you guys, this has been Cheeks Man with Duno with Valentino Khan. All his links are in the description. You are gonna be in Nocturnal this. Yeah, we just announced that Nocturnal. I will be there. What month? Hold up. Uh, September, I think. Uh, well, well, this will be out before it's that. So September. Go yeah. watch Valentino Khan. Yeah. And it's not just him. It's a whole festival. So you yeah. have to buy full tickets. But mainly, you know. Mainly, mainly Valentino <laughs> Khan. Make sure you guys go watch him. This has been Cheese Man with Duna, and we're out.